Hi, this is Paul Palmer. Today I want to talk about trend analysis. Now, the graph behind me is not about pharmaceuticals, but really the emphasis for me is on pharmaceutical trend analysis. Now, I want to give you an example. So recently I've been, I've been attempting to lose weight. The nurse told me, oh, you've got a risk of diabetes, so you need to lose weight, get your, your waistline down. Okay. So I thought, yeah, I'll do it. So I've been doing it for quite a long time now. And it goes up and down. And, and recently I was disheartened a bit because I, I there was a spike in my weight loss. So it sort of leveled off and then it went really down really fast. I thought, oh, I'm doing really well. I must be doing something right. But then it came back up. And I got a bit put off. And I thought, well, I've been doing it a long time. Keep going. So then I thought today I'd look at the trend because of course trend analysis applies just as much in life as it does when you're monitoring the environmental monitoring or looking at when you need to do the next preventative maintenance or when you can see something's going wrong in your temperature management, even the process control. So trend analysis is really important in pharmaceuticals. And, and I thought, well, practice what you preach take your own advice, look at the trend. So I'm glad to say on Fitbit, they have a trend line and you can see sort of, yeah, you can see the blue, darker blue trend line on the graph. So they've done it for you. They said, well, this is motivating because you can see over time it works. And the odd blip now and then, well, maybe I just did some a different time of day. Maybe I did, I don't know, didn't eat as much beforehand the day before or something. I don't know. But the trend over time, as you can see, oh, actually, you can't, it's off the edge. Um, it's a 4.8 kilo loss over time in three months. Now, that's a good thing, isn't it? So this blip um, next to my shoulder, which went down, I think, a kilo and then back up probably 0.8 or something like that. I can't see the scale on the left, so I can't remember. I think it's a, I think it's a kilo between each line. Um, was just a blip. And when you're doing trend analysis, when you're doing stability testing, you get blips. When you're doing environmental testing, you get blips. But you do need to look at what's the root cause. So I did. I looked at the root cause and I was thinking, well, I was eating a lot of sugar that day or that week or that weekend. I think it was a weekend. Um, I ate more of than what I would normally. And then I thought, oh, what about this? I ate that as well. Oh, high fat. You know, that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of calories. And I thought, well, do it better. Get back to your routine. The blip is just a blip and progress is continuing. So how do you apply that in pharmaceuticals? Well, think about how you're actually monitoring your systems, your processes. What's the graphs that you're following? How do things change over time? Is something getting better? Is it getting worse? One that comes to mind, CP, CPK, process capability, changes over time. Depending on the performance of the um, machine itself, depending on the people, depending on the components, there's a lot of different things that impact your process performance over time. And if you're not doing trend analysis, Something happens and it's just gradually and you don't realize, but over time, it takes you really close to the spec. And you want to get your um, alert point before you get to your action point. And then it brings it back in spec. Hopefully you know what I mean by that, but if you don't, well, we can have a chat about it. CPCBK is really interesting. I know some people don't find stats very interesting, but I do. So, when you're actually monitoring what's happening within your business, whether it's uh, actual end product results, whether it's in process results, whether it's performance of people, whatever it might be, you want to look at the trend, not one, um, one, not one result that's gone way out compared with the rest. Um, the reason being somebody can do really high performance one day, and, and you think, oh, well, they're amazing because you were watching that day. 
but then look at them over time. And it could be an outlier. For those of you that's not read it, there is a book, Outliers. It's quite interesting. It, it's, it is about the people and their performance. But an outlier in an individual result, when you're doing statistics, you often ignore. Or you don't give it the weighting that it, it could do because it can skew your data. What you want to do, you always want to look at trends over time. I've been, use, I've been using oh, all sorts of things. QSUM, for example, is a trend compared with the normal. So you have your midpoint and you have your variance from the midpoint. And that one's really good because it emphasizes change. And you'll see the trend change quicker if you use an acusum graph. Then again, you might want a logarithmic graph or you might want a... There's all sorts of different ways to adjust your, um, your trend line. Um, you might want to square it and square root it so you take away the negatives and, and end up just with the positive results. But the, the point is, you should be looking at trends. You don't want to look at them once a year. Once a year is not enough. You want to be looking at them as they go along. But how do you do that if you want to make sure you've got enough data? Well, look at 12 months of data and have it rolling along. Still 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, 12 months. So you're looking at the last 12 months. Ignore calendars. You want 12 months. You don't want January to December. That's probably the one of the worst mistakes you can make in trend analysis because you, you quite often have a change when you go from December to January and then you miss the step change. Maybe you've done a lot of clean down. Maybe you've done a refurbishment because there was a shutdown for, for Christmas or something. And it's similarly at other times of year, if you've got a, a, a religious festival and you shut the plant down for a month and in that month you decide to take advantage and, and do all the improvements, when you come back, your trend analysis, which covers that period, will show your improvements. But if you just do look at individual disparate results, you're not going to know. Oh, yeah, we've done it. What was the output? Don't know. Do we do it again? Don't know. But if you check, you'll find whether it's beneficial or not. And then you can make your decision, because that's why you do trends, to make decisions. That's it for me for today. Paul Farmer. Talk to you soon.